In this video, I'm going to show you the basic steps of how to throw a simple form on the wheel. We're going to start with a bowl like this. Before working on the potter's wheel, it's important to prepare the clay well. And to do this, we wedge the clay. We wedge the clay for two reasons. One is to remove air bubbles, and the other is to make the clay homogeneous, or all the same consistency. I have these two balls of clay. One is a dark brown clay, and one is a light white clay. And rather considering the two different colors, think of these as two different consistencies, where the brown clay is a little on the soft side, and the white clay is a little on the stiff side. And we want to mix these together so that the clay is all the same consistency. All right, here's our ball of clay, two different degrees of consistency. And the way to wedge clay is to press it into itself over and over. And it's nice to have a table or plaster slabs that are slightly low so that you can put your body weight over the clay as you press it into itself. And as you do this, you want to avoid folding the clay over on itself because if you do that, you trap air. You want to pick the clay up and press it down into itself over and over. And as you do this, you can start to feel the clay becoming an even consistency. After you've done this for a little while, it might feel like the clay is a nice even consistency. But if we take these two different colors of clay and cut them in half, you can see that there's still a lot of inconsistency in the clay. So what I usually tell students is, once you feel like you have finished wedging the clay, continue wedging it a little bit further. Now, you can see that the clay is nice and even consistency. We have a nice round ball of clay set in the middle of the wheel, pressed into place. And before I turn the wheel on, I'm going to get it centered and round. Now, I'm going to get this wheel spinning counterclockwise. And the reason why we use the wheel going counterclockwise is kind of why we drive on the right hand side of the road. It's not because you're right-handed or left-handed, it's just how the wheel evolved in the United States. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a pot and just have you watch, and then I'll grab a second ball of clay and talk to you about the steps, how to throw a pot on the wheel.
All right, to take this piece off the wheel, I'm gonna go under it twice with the wire. First time holding the wire tight, the entire pass. And the second time, put water on the wheel head and grab that water with the wire. And as you hit the bowl, hold the wire loose to help corral the water under the bowl. That gives it something to slide around on. Then when you push the bowl off the wheel, you don't want to touch the walls at all. They're way too soft. You push by the very bottom. Slide it off onto your hand. And then onto a bat. And you leave it in damp storage for a couple of days so it can become leather hard before you trim the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to go over all the steps of how to throw that bowl on the wheel. And if you're throwing multiple pieces, and you've taken one off the wheel head and you still have some clay left on the wheel head, you can leave that there and just put your second ball of clay right on top of that, as long as it's dry. Now I wanna get the ball in the middle and make sure it's round before I get the wheel spinning. All right, so I can get it spinning about a medium speed and I can leave my foot on the pedal or take my foot off the pedal it'll run by itself. I'm going to wet my left hand, then wet the clay, put my left elbow against my leg, my right hand on top of my left hand, and just push the clay down to the wheel head to make sure it's stuck. Now because my elbow is down on my leg, my hand won't wobble back and forth this way, but it does swing. So I use my right hand to help stabilize that swing. Now, I'm going to lean in on this clay with my left hand, but only using my pinky and the palm. I don't use these four fingers. So I lean into this ball of clay and make a cone with a point to it. And if I keep leaning in on the cone, the cone will rise because the clay has nowhere else to go but up. If I want to reach over with my right hand and use my fingertips as well, I can do that to help me get into, into a cone shape but I want to use as little surface area as possible. You don't want to grab the clay like this because it creates too much drag. You want to be touching the clay with as little surface area as possible. Also notice that the thumb on my left hand goes right over center. Don't drop your thumb down like this or you'll cut the top off. Also remember, don't use your thumb. Use just the palm of your hand and your pinky. And get this up into a cone and once the cone is up, push it over and back down this way. Still into a cone shape, but now it's a low cone. And you want to do this a couple of times to help prepare the clay for throwing. I'm using my leg as the force to push the clay into a cone shape. Make sure your left elbow is against your leg so you can use your leg to lean into the clay. Bring the cone up and push it over and back down. Now we're ready to center the clay. If I try to hold this clay in the middle of the wheel, it's going to take my hands all over the place. There's no way I could hold it steady in the middle of the wheel. So what I'm going to do is push it out of center, hold it steady out of center, and then release pressure slowly. The clay comes back to the middle and is centered. The reason why that works is when I'm holding it out of center, the force is coming at me from only one direction, and I can stabilize that. If I'm holding the clay in the middle of the wheel, the force is coming at me from all different directions, and I can't possibly stabilize it. I'm going to push the clay out of center, and this time I'm going to let go fast just to show you about how far out of center I hold it. So again, to center your clay, just use your left hand. The only thing your right hand is doing is help stabilizing your left. Push the clay out of center, hold it still, let go slow, and it's in the middle. We're going to use that same principle for going down the center. If I try to hold my finger right in the middle as I go down the center, the clay is going to take my finger all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little pressure off to one side as I go down the middle. The force is only coming at me from one direction, so it's much easier for me to hold my finger stable as I go down the middle. And once I've gone down to about an inch from the bottom, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch from the bottom, now I'm going to pull the wall out to 
to open up the piece. The next step is going to be making poles, but before I do that, there's a couple of things that I want to do. The first is I want to smooth out the bottom and compress that clay. So I'm going to use this rib right here. I hold the rib in my left hand like this, and I put a finger from my right hand in that dimple, and I push this rib down against the bottom to not only smooth out the bottom, but when I compress the clay like this, it makes it less likely to want to crack in the drying and firing process. And that's really all I do with this rib. The next thing I want to do is I want to push this bulge in. We have a bulge sticking out right here. So the way to do that, I take the sponge in my right hand, I put my wrist against the tray, I support my right hand with my left hand, and I push in on that bulge until I get the cylinder shape that I'm looking for. Now, you'll notice that the rim has gotten thin. I need to keep the rim thick. So to thicken it back up, I'm going to stabilize it with my left hand by pinching it with my left hand, and I'm going to compress it with the sponge in my right hand. My two hands are going to be working together. They're going to be touching each other. So just stabilize and compress so that now I have a nice thick rim, and really the thickness of the wall is even from top to bottom and now I'm ready to make a pull. So I'm gonna wet the wall, then I'm gonna lock my thumbs like this, and I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna pinch with my middle fingers. And then I'm gonna start coming up, and as I come up, I'm gonna ease off on the pinching, less and less pressure as I come up. Now your first pull, you don't wanna pull very much at all. You just wanna kinda of even up the, the wall. As you come up, you are keeping your fingers an equal distance apart, but it requires less and less pressure as you come up because you're lifting less and less clay. Now we'll have a second pull, so re-wet the wall. This time maybe I'll touch my thumbs like this, go down to the very bottom and push out from the inside, get underneath that from the outside, and then come up, and as I come up, ease off on the pressure. Less pressure, less pressure, less pressure, and by the time I get to the rim, hardly any pressure at all. It's not a bad idea to compress the rim after each pull. So pinch it and stabilize it with your left hand and push down with the sponge in your right. That helps to move any unevenness around this way. If the rim is bouncing around like this, you can pinch and compress and you can make the rim nice and even by sending that unevenness around. If the clay ever drags, add water. The clay should always be very slippery. I'm gonna go down and make one more pull. Push out from the inside, in from the outside. Now come up, and as I come up, ease off on the pressure. Less pressure, less pressure. And you wanna periodically take the water out of the inside. You don't want water sitting on the inside of your bowl. Once you have brought up the height, you're ready to smooth and shape the piece. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of this clay down here. So I'm going to use this rib to do that. I'm going to hold it in my right hand, put my wrist against the tray, stabilize my right hand with my left hand, and just swing this rib into the clay to get rid of that excess clay around the bottom of the bowl. Now if you have a bowl that's wobbling on you a bit, like this, this next step is going to help straighten that up. I want to hold the rib in my hand this way, I'm going to push the rib up against the pot this way, but from the inside I'm going to push the clay out to the rib. So I re-wet the inside wall, because I want my fingers to slide. Go down to the very bottom and lightly push the rib into the clay, clay out to the rib bring the two up together and when you get to the rim hold it steady and then pull away real slow. You can also do that from the top down. Start at the top and work your way down. Now the outside is finished. You don't want to touch it anymore. To rib the inside we're going to hold the rib in our hand this way and we're going to point our elbow at the ceiling. Now this hand acts like a pendulum. It's just swinging around here. It has zero stability. So reach over with your left hand to stabilize your right hand. 
all your stability is coming from your elbow down against your left leg. You can start at the top, work your way out and down and right across the bottom if you want. And a lot of times I don't look at the rib, I look out here at the horizon of the pot to see what effect the rib is having on the shape. And there's all kinds of things you can do with the rim of your piece to give it a finished look. <clears throat> so on that last bowl, I grabbed the rim and I pulled it out with my left hand, pinching it out. And as I'm doing that, I'm kind of applying a little bit of pressure and helping stabilize with the sponge in my right hand. Now I want this flat edge and the inside wall to come to a nice point. So to do that, I'm going to hold my fingers underneath the rim and press down with the rib, right on that rim. And then I'm going to go down the inside. And I might go back and forth a couple of times until I get that nice sharp edge that I'm looking for. And then the last thing I do with the, the form is I add a little water to the rim and I pinch the rim and kind of compress the rim a little bit. Not only to make sure it's smooth and centered before I quit, but that compression also helps to prevent it from chipping when you actually use the bowl. And then before you take the piece off the wheel, it's a good idea to do what's called a little pre-trim. I'm going to take this trimming this um, rib and I'm going to take out a little bit of clay from underneath the bowl. Like now I will go under the bowl with the wire twice. The first time holding the wire tight the entire pass down against the wheel head. The second time put water on the wheel head and then grab that water Hold the wire loose to help corral the water under the bowl. That gives it something to slide around on. And you don't want to touch the walls at all. They're way too soft. You're going to push by the very bottom. Take the back half of the tray off. Slide this bowl right off under my hand. And then I'll set it on a bat and leave it in the damp storage for a couple of days. Once it's leather hard, I can flip it over and trim the bottom. All right, we threw these two bowls a couple of days ago and they've had some chance to dry. Now they're leather hard and they're ready to have the bottom finished. We're gonna go ahead and trim the bottom. So we have these grips available that can help hold the pot into the middle of the wheel as well. And they're two separate pieces fit together like that and the whole piece just sets down over the wheel head. And you have a couple of different types of pads. These smaller pads hold the pad further out and they're for plates. And these pads hold the pad closer to the inside and are for bowls and cups. So you want to make sure you're using the same three pads, identical pads. And what you do is spin the top half of the grip until it lines up with the beginning of the spiral and then put the three pads on. Now you can put them on this direction and use posts if you are centering something tall. But we're doing a bowl, so we're going to put the pads on the grip, pad side in, spinning just the top brings the pads in together at the same rate, so they're equal distance from the center. Now we can turn our bowl upside down on the grip, and as we spin just the top half of the grip, 
it'll hold the bowl on the wheel and automatically centers. So I'm going to show you how to trim by just trimming this one and then when I go to trim the second one I'll talk about the steps used for trimming a pot on the wheel. Alright, rather simple. So, again, before you set the bowl on the wheel, it's a good idea to get a sense of how thick the bottom is so you know how much room you can trim. I'm going to set it in the middle of the grip and slowly turn the top until the pads come in and meet, meet the bowl. Now, I want to spin the wheel relatively quickly and I can take my foot off the pedal to keep the wheel spinning at a constant rate if I find myself changing the speed of the pedal. I use these two trimming tools. I use the large tool for smoothing and shaping and the smaller tool for digging and cutting. I'm going to hold this larger tool in my hand like a hammer, but I'm also going to touch it with my left hand so that the tool is being stabilized by both hands. And I keep both elbows down for stability. This pot is going to want to bounce my tool around like this, but I want to hold that tool as steady as possible. I also use the fingers on my left hand to just kind of hold the bowl down, make sure it doesn't want to jump off the wheel. Now I start by rounding up the bottom. Usually when you throw a pot on the wheel, you have a lot of leftover clay right in that corner. So you want to get rid of that extra clay right down the side. And once you have smoothed that out from the side up to the bottom, you're ready to put in uh, the outside of the foot. So I'm going to just go down right about here. I can use the smaller edge of the large tool or I can use the smaller trimming tool. But this is going to be the outside of the foot, so what I want to do is I want to make this round from the outside of the foot all the way down the side of the bowl. And when I do that, you can see that it starts to look like a bowl. Once the outside is finished, I'm ready to work on the inside. <clears throat> I want a raised foot that is the highest point all the way around this bowl. So I start on the inside and work my way out. I hold the smaller tool in my hand like a pencil and I support it with two fingers from my left hand and again it's really important to keep both elbows down so you can hold the tool nice and steady. And just start from the inside and work your way out. The clay might want to bounce your tool around a little bit but try to avoid allowing that to happen and just hold that tool as steady as you can. You can use the round edge like this, or you can flip the tool around and use the flat edge, or maybe even the corner. So I'm going to go down right about here, and I'm going to save this ring for the foot. And once I've dug out the majority of this bottom, I can use this larger tool to smooth out the bottom. Now, everything's going to get glazed except the foot. And I don't want the foot 
to scratch a counter or a table so I want to make sure the foot is very smooth. So you polish it with your fingers or you can use the wood portion, the wood handle of the trimming tool to polish or burnish. Making sure that's nice and smooth. To remove the bowl from the grip, you spin the top half of the grip in the opposite direction, pulling the pads away from your piece. Sign the bottom of your piece and put it in an area where it can dry slow for a day or two before you're ready to let it sit out and get ready for firing in the kiln. You notice that the foot is not just uh, for aesthetic purposes, but it really serves a functional purpose as well. Because it doesn't have a flat bottom, when I set this bowl down, it sets down nice and stable. If we were to leave the bottom flat, there's a good chance that it might warp up and the bottom sitting on a table would rock. So that's a finished piece.